Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll discuss advanced concurrency optimizations for your Rust code. If you are working with Rust programming language for some time now, you should have worked with concurrency stuff in Rust. If you haven't, there are tons of videos popping on your right top. We have discussed things in detail like mutex, reference countings and tons of other stuff. So make sure to check it out before moving on to this advanced stuff. Let's take a moment and remind ourselves what is a mutex and why do we even need it? So mutex is a lock that ensures only one thread can access a shared value at a time so the data stays safe. But let's try to understand with an example. Let's say we have a bank account and there are two transactions occurring simultaneously on the same bank account. One is a withdraw transaction of $80. Another one is a $50 deposit. And the initial balance is $100. Now both transactions read as $100. Transaction 1 modifies it to 820 and tries to write. Another transaction modifies it to 150 and tries to write. The balance at the end shows as 150. But that shouldn't be the case because $80 have been withdrawn and 50 has been deposited. So at the end of the day, the total balance is 70. But instead, it shows as 150. Now that's a classic case of why do we need locking? Let's see how locking solves this problem. Right here, we have again transaction A of $80 and transaction B to deposit $50. First, if transaction A is getting processed, then transaction A will lock the state and first read it as 100, modify by withdrawing 80 and now the new balance is 20, update the new balance. And then meanwhile, transaction B has to wait for transaction A to complete. So there is no dirty reads and we end up getting a correct value of the balance which is $20 and then 20 is updated with 50 and the end balance should be 70 unlike right here which is 150. So this is exactly why we need locks on database as well as on application level depending on your use case. But for this video we are focused on the application level which is where we use mutex in Rust to you know lock the state so you know there is a safe access and data stays consistent and safe. So we have discussed mutex in the previous video in detail you can check it out but now let's move to you know the original problem that we want to solve why the standard mutex is not better when comparing to the parking lot create mutex and why you should use parking lot mutex now we know what is a mutex and why do we need it let's dive into it and we understand what the code and how this mutex the standard mutex works and try to figure out a problem and then see how parking lots solve that problem in this example, we have a counter and we spawn multiple threads in a loop. And inside, we just try to update a same shared number. And at the end of the day, we just print the count. Now, we are using mutex here because the number is shared across multiple threads and multiple threads are trying to access and modify the number. So we want to use mutex for, you know, safely updating our data and, you know, not having any dirty stuff. Let's take a moment and discuss standard mutex behind the scenes to better understand the behavior, observe the problem. So right here we are spawning 10 threads. But let's take two threads, thread A and thread B. On mutex, when the lock request is sent, let's check if it's available. And then the lock is acquired. In the critical zone is where our processing is done, the critical processing. In this case, it's, you know, updating a shared counter and then the lock is released. Now this is a happy path. So when many threads contend for one mutex, which is basically the case in our example, the standard mutex often puts the waiting threads to sleep in the operating system, which you can see right here. So each sleep and wake causes context switch. And context switches are slow and become more expensive as the thread count grows. That is exactly the problem with standard mutex. The standard mutex sends waiting threads to the operating system to sleep and later the operating system wakes them up which again requires context switching and stuff. So that is a problem which parking lot helps us solve. Again, okay? this is an advanced optimization if you are working with something which requires a very high concurrency control and you know uh, you want your application to be as quick as fast as possible, try using uh, you know parking lot and see the difference. Now let's see how parking lot helps us solve the problem. So we are using parking lot mutex in this example for which you can just do is cargo add parking lot. 
rest of the example remains the same. We have a counter, we have a mutex, and then we have threads, which tries to update the shared state. And at the end of the day, we just print the count. Now let's see the working for parking lock mutex to better understand the solution. So again, we have thread A and thread B and the lock for request parking lot and check the state if state is free. Kind of same as the standard mutex, acquire, acquire the parking lot and do the standard uh, critical zone stuff and then release the parking lot. What happens is in, in case of busy, the thread is not sent to operating system for sleep. Instead, it's parked in the local queue and wait in the user space. So parking lot, as the name suggests, works exactly how parking lots work in our real world. It's acquiring the parking lot and then releasing the parking lot while other threads continue to wait in a local queue for availability in the parking lot. So it works basically on the concept of park and unpark. And this is how our problem for, you know, context switches and sleep on the uh, sleep and wake for the OS threads is uh, basically solved. So when should you be using which? I would say use standard mutex when shared data access is low and simple and use parking lot mutex when many threads will compete or when timing and smooth performance matter. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys learn something new if you did like the video share with your friends i'll catch you guys with another interesting topic in another video until then bye bye